Grodno is not only special because of its unique location on the river Neman and next to Poland and Lithuania, but also because it has a number of historical places. The old castle, the oldest church on the territory of Belarus, Farni Cathedral, the Catholic Church in the Bernardin Monastery founded in the 16th century, the Soviet-era architectural marvel Grodno Drama Theater, the pedestrian street full of history and culture, beautiful landscape, gorgeous sunsets reflected in the river, and in general, every other street in Grodno has something unique and amazing to offer. It's often referred to as a cultural capital of Belarus. Grodno is definitely worth a visit, and I'm so glad I got a chance to do it. I took a minibus from Minsk to Grodno, and while we are on the way, let me tell you a little bit about the history of this city. First documentary evidence of Grodno is to be found under the name Garodin at the beginning of the 12th century. The town was presumably named after the river Garodnia. Another explanation is that the name comes from the verb garadit, in English it means to enclose. The name Grodno, Grodno alongside Gorodin, was first used in the year of 1562 in documents of Grand Duke August II. Grodno has a stormy history, having been sacked by the Tatars in 1241 and by the Teutonic Knights in 1284 and 1391. It passed to Lithuania in the 13th century, later to Poland and then to Russia in 1795. It was under Poland from 1921 to 1939. At the beginning of the 1930s, Poland started on a policy of colonization and assimilation. All Belarusian schools were closed and the use of the Belarusian language was forbidden. In 1939, Grodno became part of the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic. During the Second World War, Grodno was one of the largest strongholds of the partisan and underground movements. After the war, the majority of the Polish inhabitants returned to Poland. The town recovered fast after the war. Like many other towns in the Soviet Union, after the war Grodno was developed according to the master plan of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Since 1991, the city has belonged to the Independent Republic of Belarus. Due to its amazing architectural appearance in the 16th century, Grodno was included in Brown's Cologne Encyclopedia as one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. Despite the huge number of wars that passed through its history, the city practically didn't suffer. And today, over 300 historical and cultural monuments are concentrated in the city center. Once I arrived at the bus station, which is conveniently located close to the city center, I decided to walk to my Airbnb place near the historical center of Grodno. Walking along these streets brought me so much joy that I completely ignored that I was actually dragging luggage with me. <laughs> my Airbnb was perfectly located with this fantastic view, which is nice both on a sunny and gloomy days. Without wasting a minute, I went to explore the historical part of Grodno, and this is where we will also start our tour with you. This is one of the famous landmarks in the city, which looks fabulous at the sunset time, the Catholic Church of the Discovery of the Holy Cross. Nearby is another former Catholic monastery, Bernardine Monastery. Now, there is a seminary, located in a complex of buildings of a former monastery, and the main church of the monastery was built in 1618. Now, the church is an important historical monument and attraction of Grodno and throughout Belarus. Now, if you look at this church from another angle, you will see the tank, which is a monument in honor of the soldiers' liberators established in 1968. This is Mostavaya Street, and it eventually takes you across the Neman River. 
the location where I'm now is wonderful. From here you can spot the Grodno Drama Theatre along with a large sign saying Grodno. Further that way is Stefan Batori Street that will take us to the historical center. Let me just stop for a second at this Grodno Drama Theatre. The building that has a futuristic shape was built in 1947. Though it is relatively modern built structure among the old castle and new castle of Grodno, it is blended in the most inconvincible way with the panorama of the city. This interestingly shaped building is one of the most important landmarks of Grodno city and definitely something from the Soviet era architectural marvels that deserves to be seen. Alright, let's go further along Stefan Batori Street, which will take us to the center of Sovetska Square, or Soviet Square in English. This is the main square in Grodno. Almost everything to be seen in the city starts from here. It's big, central and impressive, impossible to be missed. It's had many names. It was called the Old Market, or simply the Market, the Town Hall, Front Cathedral, was named after Stefan Batori. It became Soviet, or Sovetska, in 1914. It's definitely a popular place in the city to take a walk, get together with friends, have your coffee and enjoy a pleasant atmosphere. Here is an interesting building that gives a nice contrast. This three-story house was built at the end of the 19th century in the Art Nouveau style. The building belonged to the merchant Ivan Muravyov, and this is how it looked in 1975. One prominent building that we absolutely can't miss is Farne Cathedral. It's one of the major attractions of Grodno, the Catholic Cathedral of St. Francis Xavier. This church is also called Farne, which means main. The church was built in 1703 and now is an important architectural monument. This is one of the largest and most beautiful Catholic churches in Belarus. You won't miss the beautiful pedestrian Sovetska Street or Soviet Street in English. Sovetska Street in Grodno is one of the oldest streets in the historical city center. It has the status of a pedestrian street and cars are strictly prohibited from entering here. This street stretches for about half a kilometer. You can even spot ancient buildings dating from the 15th to 17th centuries here. Each of them can be viewed for hours, and it is simply pleasant to walk along the pedestrian street since the cobblestone road has been preserved since Polish times. In many houses on Sovetska, there are cafes and small restaurants where you can have an inexpensive snack. Lots of cultural and entertainment venues and a rich past you can find here. As we come to an end of this cute pedestrian street, we are about to face the Swiss Valley. Yes, yes, the Belarusian Swiss Valley. Well, this is how the city park is called. It's a picturesque park complex in the central part of the city. Now it is rightfully considered one of the main attractions of the city over the Neman. Here, under the shade of old trees, not only Grodny residents wander with their families, but also tourists from different parts of Belarus are impressed by the beauty of these places. Alright, we are about to go to some of the oldest places in the city of Grodno, but first, let's stop for coffee and some vegan cake. Here is a very nice place. It's not vegan, but it has vegan dessert and obviously vegan coffee with almond milk and whatever milk you prefer. And now let's head to the old and new castles of Krodno and the river Neman. On the way there we can't miss one more interesting landmark in Grodno, the fire station with a tower which was built in the early 20th century. The fire station is still fulfilling its function. Here we have reached the old Grodno castle. 
This castle was not preserved from it remained only ruins. Can you imagine that the first stone fortifications were erected on the side of the castle in the 12th century? Later in the course of history, the castle was repeatedly destroyed, rebuilt and reconstructed. Castle and the town connects by stone arch bridge, built to replace the wooden in the second half of the 17th century. And what about the new castle? It is now also an important attraction of Grodno. New castle was built right next to the old castle in 1742. This castle was largely rebuilt in Soviet times. Although this structure is called a castle, it has never really fulfilled defensive functions. It was mainly a palace, the royal palace. Both castles now, new and old, house museums. From the new castle, by the way, there is a fantastic view of the river Neman. So how about we go under the bridge now and come out to this river? This place is so popular among locals and tourists just to walk around, ride a bicycle. There's even a whole bicycle route map provided. And from here we can view the old castle once again in all its grandeur. And of course, enjoy other views in this area. We are now heading to the old extant church in Belarus, the Kaloja Church of Saints Boris and Gleb. You can get there from here, though you need to climb a bit, which we will do. <laughs> the view from the church is definitely amazing. Here it is, the Orthodox Church of Saints Boris and Gleb. It is not only a significant attraction in Grodno, but a very important architectural monument. It is also called Kaloja. This church was built in 1183. This is one of the oldest stone structures in Belarus. Just incredible even to be near this kind of preserved building. Next to the church, there is a park, which seems to be named after the church, Kalorsky Park. It is a quiet but beautiful place with great views of the river and the city. In the park, there is also a stella of 850th anniversary of Grodno. It was installed in 1978. The height is 31 meters. An alley with flowers and trees leads to this monument. Overall, it is a quiet and pretty place to spend some time, especially for nature lovers out there. When I was there, it was about to rain, so I didn't spend as much time as I wanted to, but I still managed to enjoy. From the park, you can come out to the city by crossing the Garodnichanka River. There were some really pretty views when I was walking there. During the three days I spent in Grodno, most of the time the weather was not as great as I hoped it would be. But that didn't stop me from exploring. So one of those days I took a walk to Lenin Square and Park Gelebert.
Here is the spark named after Jean-Emmanuel Gilbert, who was a French medical scientist and educator. With the help of the philanthropist Anthony Tuzengal, he founded the Grodno Medical Academy. He is also one of the founders of the Grodno Hospital and created a botanical garden. When World War II broke out, the military filled the hospital buried soldiers in the park. After the end of the Great Patriotic War, all the remains were reburied in one mass grave. At this place, there is a pedestal where the eternal flame is lit. Today, the park is very different from its first version, laid by Jean Gilbert. Not far from the park, there is a military clinical medical center of the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus. I wanted to go to this place as I knew my dad had been there decades ago and I felt like finding this place. Alright, so across from the park, Park Gilbert, there is Lenin Square. If we take a walk from here, we can easily get back to our Savetska Street, where we've been before. But while walking there, I wanted to show you a vegan place, which has both great food and amazing vibe. You know, I just love getting lost in the streets of a new Tumi city. Sometimes you get to find some interesting places you didn't even know of before. Here, let's just enjoy random places of the historical city center of Grodno. What do you think of these public trash cans? I find them so cute! Oh, I found this street famous for being a movie set! On the third day in Grodno, I finally got a wonderful clear day, which was perfect, as I planned to walk a lot that day, all the way to the area named Polish. And while we are walking, let me tell you why I decided to go to definitely not a touristy area. After my dad passed away in June 2021, I wanted to stay connected to him as much as possible. As I was going through his pictures, I found that he served in the army back in the 80s in Grodno. Where exactly, I didn't know, but I had a few photos. At the local military enlistment office, I got some approximate location, the area, Polish. So let's go there and see if I can find what I'm looking for. So these are some places I'm searching for and with some walking here and there, asking people around, I found them. Here is this beautiful, as it turned out, river from the picture.
this one here is the building that used to be used as a military medical one and this is exactly where my dad used to perform his duties as he was a military doctor. This whole military unit has long been abandoned but I was really happy to be able to find it. You know, there's one more amazing thing I noticed when I was there. The trees. Those are the same trees from the picture, though they are much older now. It was just really like stepping through the past. There is one more memorial dedicated to those fallen during the Great Patriotic War. I found it nearby this former military unit. And it is also the place my dad visited and took a picture of about 40 years ago. Another memorial I knew was somewhere there after looking at the picture and I found it. And this was pretty much the whole day full of walking and exploring. At the end of the day I came back to probably the most peaceful place in Grodno, the Neman River. By the way, there is one more spot which I recognize where my dad took a picture right here on the river. The location is where the new castle is. This was such a rewarding trip for me. I finished my Grodno experience by watching a gorgeous sunset reflected in the river and the next day I was off to my next destination which I will tell you about in my next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you loved Grodno as much as I did. Don't forget to subscribe to enjoy more videos about my travels around Belarus and around the world.